All right. Matthew 16, we'll begin reading verse 13. The Bible says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter, by the way, Simon was never uh, shy about speaking up. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good fellowship before service. And God, thank you for these good testimonies. Lord, I didn't hear one person brag on themselves or bring glory to themselves. They all were thankful and glorified you. And God, that edifies your people. That helps us. And God, I'm thankful for folks that minded the Lord and testified tonight. Now, thank you for the reading word of God. Thank you for a good day. Thank you for the good service this morning. That doesn't suffice for this hour. Help us now from the word of God. Help your people. And God, I, I pray you'll get glory and honor. In Jesus' wonderful name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Notice, first of all, Jesus asked a question in verse number 13. He said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, please be mindful of the fact Jesus never asked a question because he needed to know the answer. He knows everything. But Jesus often would ask them a question to see if they knew the answer. And a lot of times he may have proved to them that they did know the answer, but they might have been afraid to speak up. And friends, God doesn't allow things to come into your life because God doesn't know uh, what you do or do not need. But a lot of times uh, he lets things to come into our lives to show us that we're stronger than we really thought we were. And he asked them that question, Who do men say that I am? Now, notice their answer in verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some Elias, or we would call him Elijah. Others, Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Now, isn't it amazing that they had all kinds of opinions who Jesus was, but they didn't call him who he was. Notice they thought he might be John the Baptist. Well, we know John's been beheaded. It's not John. But they associated him with John the Baptist because... John used water baptism for remission of sins. And of course, we know Jesus is the one that cleanses us from all sin. Can I say they thought he might be Elijah because Elijah was a man that prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years till Elijah prayed that it would rain uh, and uh, that it rained again. And can I say, uh, nobody talked to the Father like Jesus, uh, so they thought he was Elijah because of his praying. Uh, can I say they thought he was Jeremiah because Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. And can I say uh, Jesus often would look at Jerusalem and often looked uh, at folks who were trusting in men and trusting in riches and trusting in religion but not trusting in God. Uh, and he would weep. Uh, matter of fact, uh, when Lazarus died, uh, even the mourners said, oh, how he loved him because he wept over Lazarus. Uh, He's known, they thought he might be Jeremiah because of his weeping. And then it said uh, uh, in verse 14, or one of the prophets. Uh, he's known uh, maybe as one of the prophets because all the prophets, uh, uh, they prophesied, they preached, the messages that they preached came to pass. Uh, everything Jesus said came to pass. Uh, so he's known uh, maybe as one of the prophets uh, for his messages. Uh, isn't it amazing this day and age if we went out on the street and started asking people who Jesus was, all the answers we'd get? Uh, most of them say he's a good man or good teacher. Or, uh, he was a religious leader. They'll give you everything but the right answer. We see Jesus ask a question. We see their answer. Now Jesus amplifies the question to make it a little more personal in verse 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? 
It's one thing to say who the world says I am. Who do you say, say I am? Hmm? He amplified the question, made it more personal. Now, Peter's the only one that addresses it this time. Look what Peter says there in verse 16. And Simon Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the right answer. Hmm? He said, You're the Christ. You're the promised one. You're the Messiah. You're the one that's coming to redeem Israel. You're the son of the living God. You're not uh, a son of a dead God. You're the son of the living God, Jehovah God. We know who you are. Uh, isn't it a blessing uh, that there are some who does know who he is? huh? But then notice, if you will, the accolades. What Jesus, uh, how he addresses Peter after Peter gave the right answer. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That's why Judas Iscariot didn't answer the question. He didn't know the Father. That's why Thomas didn't answer the question. He's too busy doubting. Mm. Uh, Matthew probably didn't answer because he's too busy counting some money. He's a tax collector. You know what I'm saying? Luke's trying to uh, come up with a cure for cancer. I don't know. But the Lord told Peter he was blessed because the Lord had revealed it unto him. Mm? And he goes on to say, But I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Now notice this is a foundational argument in the New Testament. I want you to understand this right here. He says, Thou art Peter. Now you don't need Greek to understand the New Testament. If you went to school any length of time and you took English, I know it's a foreign language to most of us, but if you took English, you had to take punctuation. I don't know how they do it now because I'm listening to kids. They can't speak at all anymore. They just text. Um, but one thing I hated in English class was when we had to diagram sentences. I hated that class. I appreciate it now, but I hated it then. Uh, but you need to know a little bit about English. You need to know a little bit about punctuation. He says, thou art Peter. And then there's a comma. Now, comma means you need to pause. Okay? The problem with a lot of people, they don't see the comma. He said, thou art Peter. Hmm? And upon this rock. Now, here's what happens. Stand up, former Catholic. He says, Thou art Peter. Pause. But upon this rock, points to himself. You can sit back down. We've seen enough of you, okay? Uh, thou art Peter, but upon this rock I will build my church. Peter means little stone. Church isn't built on a little stone. It's built on the rock of ages. Huh? Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If it's built on Peter, she'd have been gone a long time ago. Uh, it's a foundational argument. Uh, 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 the church was not built on Peter. Those that believe the church uh, was started at Pentecost believe it because they believe Peter started the church. Uh, no, the church was started in Matthew chapter number 10. Uh, the church was started by the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, and it was built upon the Lord Jesus. Uh, and it was built upon the chief cornerstone, the Lord Jesus. Uh, hey, he's the one that uh, uh, purchased it. He's the one that commissioned it. Uh, and in Acts chapter 2, he empowered it. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, hell's been trying to stamp her out for over 2,000 years. Uh, and as I said this morning, the church isn't going down. Uh, she's going up. Because it's the Lord's church. And what a blessing to know the Lord. Well, what I'd like to focus on, Jesus asks two questions. He says, whom do men say that I am, the, I the Son of Man am? And then he says, but whom say ye that I am? I'm going to preach on who is Jesus. Who is Jesus? Well, can I say he's the Son of God? That's what Peter said. He's the Son of the living God. Make no mistake. He's not a dead Jew in a tomb somewhere. He's the risen Savior. Uh, 
He was God manifest in the flesh. Uh, he is the very Son of God. Uh, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, uh, ever living to make intercession for you and I. Uh, there's one mediator between God and man, uh, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, and my dear friends, he's seated there uh, until one day uh, when the Father says, go get your bride. Uh, and he's stepping out on the clouds uh, and the trump of the archangel is going to shout uh, or sa sound uh, and there's going to be a shout uh, hey and ye and I uh, who are alive the dead in Christ will rise first and ye and I who are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up to be, uh, meet him in the air uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, he's the son of God what a blessing who's Jesus son of God a lot of modern day Christianity and a lot of the modern songs and a lot of the modern I don't like anything modern a lot of the modern everything, they say a lot about God. They don't say anything about Jesus. You know, uh, you can make anything a God, um, but you don't make Jesus God. He is God. He's the Son of God. Can I say this? He's the Savior. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. He's the only means of salvation. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the Savior. He's the only way. Uh, I know religion says there's many paths that lead to heaven. No, there's only one way, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, hey, if you try to go any other way, Jesus said you're a thief and a robber. Uh, there's only one way. You've got to go through the door of the sheep, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, he's the only way. Thanks be unto him, he's the Savior. You see, the law was given to show us we couldn't keep the law of God. It was our schoolmaster. Shows us we couldn't be holy. We couldn't be righteous. All we could be concerning the law is guilty. But Jesus came and he fulfilled the law uh, and he took the handwriting of ordinances that were against us and nailed them to his cross. Uh, and when you and I came to him by faith and repented of our sins, uh, he washed us in his blood, uh, robed us in his righteousness. Uh, hey, uh, I'm not much on the outside, but my soul's been sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, hey, I'm saved, saved, saved because uh, I met the Savior. Hallelujah. And he saved my never dying soul. Who is Jesus? He's the Son of God. He's the sh Savior. But I've got good news. He's the shepherd. Oh, yeah. He's the shepherd. He's the shepherd of our souls. And can I say in Psalms 22, he's the good shepherd. In Psalms 23, he's the great shepherd. In Psalms 24, he's the chief shepherd. Uh, uh, but David said, he's my shepherd. Hallelujah. Uh, he is the shepherd. Uh, but on the third Saturday, March of 1974, he became my shepherd. Uh, and he's been leading me home ever since. Uh, I bless his name. He's the shepherd of the sheep. Uh, I have people all the time say, well, how many, how many do, does your church run? Well, my church runs zero because I don't have a church. But I'm privileged to pastor one of the Lord's churches. He's the good and great and chief shepherd. I'm just an under-shepherd. I just take orders from him. And he takes care of the rest. Huh? I'm glad he's the shepherd. Huh? He's the Savior. He's the Son of God. I alluded to it a minute ago. He's the chief cornerstone. Things built on him. Hmm? Uh, there's a lot of places that call themselves churches. Hallelujah, a lot of them change the name, call themselves fellowships uh, or places of worship. And they're worshiping something. That's why John told us, try the spirits where they be of God. They're not worshiping him, but they're worshiping something. But not everything that calls itself a church is a church that the Lord Jesus Christ founded. A lot of false churches. A lot of churches that are started in the wrong way. They're started by man. And they're built on man. And they're built on the principles of man. Mm -mm. I'm glad for the one that Jesus started. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't have time to get into it. You can get the Baptist distinctives and you'll hear it all. Uh, that's all. Uh, huh? But in Ephesians chapter 4, there's one body and one baptism. Uh, one faith. It's all started by Jesus. Anything that ain't of him, it's wrong. I don't care what it is. Say, well, they're doing good works. That's their problem. They're doing good works. They got hooked up with Jesus. He'd do good works through them. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the chief cornerstone. Can I say this? He's our stronghold. Mm -hmm. He is. 
He's our defense. He's the one that's always on guard to take care of us. Mm -mm. Oh, what a blessing. Now, I never served in the military. I know, Brother Jim, you did. And I'm sure as long as you was on base and you was in that fortified area, you felt pretty safe. You out there on an island by yourself, you didn't feel so safe. I'm glad the Lord's got us on a stronghold. We're hedged in, and He's protecting us. Uh, you realize nothing can get to you unless it comes through God's hand? That's pretty good protection. Hmm? Uh, what's that one? All state the good hands, people? No, I'll just take Jesus. Hmm? His is the great hand system. Huh? Nothing penetrates his hand that he doesn't allow it. He takes good. And he even let us know, even with temptation, he'll make a way of escape. Huh? He's our stronghold. It'd be a good day in your life when you quit fighting and let the Lord fight for you. Just lean on him. Let him have it, friend. He can handle it. The reason you can't sleep at night, the reason you got ulcers, the reason you're pulling your hair out, and no offense, Brother Ed, but the reason uh, some of you got problems is because you're trying to handle it. You got a stronghold. He can handle it. Let him have it, friend. Be a great day in your life. huh? He's our stronghold. Can I say this? He's our shelter. Mm. Uh, aren't you glad you can run underneath his wings? And you can find shelter from the storms. Hallelujah for that. Mm. I'm glad I'm under the shadow of a great rock. Uh, uh, do you know when you're close to the shepherd and under his wings, the enemy can't find you? Mm. Next time you get to feeling like old Slewfoot sneaking up behind you, just run to Jesus. Mm. Uh, he gets one glimpse of Jesus, he'll forget all about you. Jesus whips him every day. You understand that, don't you? Uh, uh. Say, well, the devil's getting the best of me. Well, just go run to Jesus. I don't know what else to tell you. He'll help you, huh? He's our shelter. And I say this about Jesus. Who's Jesus? He's our serenity. Can you imagine how messed up we'd be if all our hope was in this world? I don't know how people out there are dealing with it. I mean, a lot of them complain a lot. But how do they really deal with it not knowing the Lord? i tell you how they deal with it. Drug usage in America is an all-time high. Alcohol sales are an all-time high. Uh, Miss Nett said she went to get something the other day, and people come, she went to the pet store and said, the people coming out of the liquor store right next door were in droves. I said, it's because they're trying to drink away their $5 gallon gas prices. They're trying to, trying to cope in this old world. They're trying to just drown away their problems. The only problem is when they sober up, they got problems. And if they were driving, they got big problems because Deputy Foster done put them behind bars, huh? Boy, I'm glad I've got peace of mind. I don't like what's going on in this world, but I know this thing's winding down. And I know if it doesn't, if it doesn't wind down, the Lord's going to take care of His. And I, it's it's okay. We sang that song this morning, "Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine." Well, I'm glad for blessed assurance. Glad for peace. I don't have to understand it all. Some of y'all, that'd help you too if you quit trying to understand it all. I don't understand how a black cow can eat green grass and give white milk, but it does. I don't understand how you can flip them switches back there and the lights come on. I don't understand all that. You say, well, there's a power company. and well, Yeah, but I don't understand it all. Huh? You know, what happens is, is some of these guys I've seen working in some of these power plants, what happens? They go to sleep on the job. huh? Listen, I don't understand all that. I don't under have to understand how God's going to do it all. I just need to know Him. Hmm? Some of y'all quit trying to figure it out. Just trust Him. He's never failed you yet. Why would He start now? Just trust Him. Hmm? Miss Marcy, how long you been saved? Long time. 47 years. Miss Mary, how long you been saved? You can't count that far. <laughs> 
25 years. Miss Cinda, how long you been saved? 30 years. Brother Jack, how long you been saved? Five years. Miss Jackie, how long you been saved? 18 years. Miss Michelle just got saved a couple years ago, huh? Six years, huh? What a blessing, huh? Red, how long you been saved? 39 years. What a blessing. 2-2, two, two, how long you been saved? 16 years, huh? Miss, Miss Noreen, how long you been saved? You ain't that old, huh? <laughs> now let me ask y'all a question. Has God ever failed you? Well, why would he start now? So quit fretting over it. Just trust him. You say, well, Brother Doug, it gets hard. Well, get in the book so then faith coming by here and here by the word of God. Just start, find, find you a promise. You don't have to memorize all 30,000 promises in the Word of God. Find you one. And memorize that promise and quote it every day. You'll be amazed at how much peace you start getting when you just trust God. He's our serenity. And if you can't memorize because you're getting old like me, let me help you something. Just start saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. About the fourth one something will kind of start coming over you because the devil hates that name. Huh? And all of a sudden you'll find hope just mentioning his name. Uh, he's our serenity. Can I say this? Who is Jesus? He's my song. Oh, he's a song in due season. Huh? Just start humming you a few bars. do to do to do to do Jesus. do to do to do to do Jesus. It'll help you. My grandpa, if my Aunt Lynn was here, she's on vacation, if she was here tonight, she'd tell you, my grandpa, he never knew any words to hardly any songs. And you'd just hear him going through the house, do to do to do to do to do Jesus. Huh? I don't know anything, but that, that man of God had more power of God on him than most of the preachers I've ever met in my life. And if that just do to do to do Jesus, bring the power of God, some of us need to learn that song. Are you listening? He's my song. Huh? Aren't you glad he gives a good song in due season? He's got a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Well, I thank God for some good godly songs that lifts my spirit. Uh, Miss Ned had one on this morning. I said, that one's my favorite. She said, well, why don't we learn it? I said, well, well let's learn it. Uh, it just speaks peace. He's my song. He'll help you. Hmm? I don't understand how the world lives on worldly music. By the way, Today's music, I don't even understand it. They all thought Elvis was wicked. Elvis was a saint compared to this junk going on today. I don't, I don't understand it, huh? I'm at least, I, I was in a restaurant or something the other night, and I looked at Sam, and I said, what are them words? What's that saying? He says, he's from St. Lucia. He don't even know English hardly. You know? <laughs> but I'm glad I got a song that has more than meaning. It's got a message. Jesus is my song. Who is Jesus? I alluded to it a minute ago. He's the soon coming king. And tonight, it'd do you some good just to keep your mind on who Jesus is. Because as the days come, somebody might ask you, why do you go to church? Who is this Jesus? Well, let me tell you who he is. My dear friends, you just might be able to win them to him. And that's why he left us here anyway. To be a light and to be salt to this sorry, no good world. To let them know who Jesus is. Say, preacher, I don't know the Bible like you do. Well, if you know Jesus, you know enough. All you need to do is tell them how he, how he, where he found you and how he saved you. That's all you need to be able to tell them. Huh? If nothing else, do like the woman at the well. Well, come see a man. Told me all things I ever did. Is this not a Christ? Not the Christ. Just go get them, bring them in. Say, hey, come, you'll hear about him. It changed your life, he changed mine. Hmm? My dear friends, are you glad you know who Jesus is? Hmm? Can we do this? I just kind of feel led to do this. I hadn't planned on this, but it just kind of struck my heart. Obviously, the altars are always open in our church. If you need to come pray, the altar's open. But can we just... Have a little time of fellowship where we go to one another and tell one another we appreciate one another. We're thankful one another. We're thankful Jesus saved you and saved me and put us in this church and 
let us meet one another and just be around one can we just spend a few minutes being an encouragement to one another i mean if the sun comes up tomorrow you're going to have to face another week you're going to have to deal with this dirty old world wouldn't it be good to just have something in your uh, spring in your step and say, man, somebody really encouraged me last night. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.